And now it's time for a preview of an upcoming game by Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're going to be taking a look at a preview of a game called Damage Report. Damage Report is a cooperative space game. Now you say, well, wait a minute, there already are cooperative space games. Well, this one's a little bit different than others because in this one you're working together to keep your spaceship together and basically it's a real-time game. You're using timers in this game as you take your different actions and you work together but no one can tell you what to do because they'll be too busy working on their own job. You will be able to communicate with one another but there's stuff going on the whole game. I'm going to show you a bit of how the game is played and we'll be back. Now remember when we go over this game that the components in this, what you're seeing here, are prototype components, so they are not necessarily what you'll see in the final game, but it gives you kind of a depiction of how the game will play. This is one of the missions that's set up, and each mission will have different boards that are connected by corridors. Uh, here, for example, is the weapons display. It shows you what percentage the weapons is at. This one's here is purple, so it starts at 50%, but it will go up and down over the course of the game, and different place, different spots in the board have different resources that, that you will need to do different things in these different sections. And there are sections which are not included in this scenario. For example, there's also a possibility of a cargo bay and a hangar deck, and there's different things that are going on. And players are gonna have their own personal board, so they'll have a character that they will have a character marker for, and also a different board here that shows uh, what they can carry, a special ability they have, and then it shows you what you can do on your turn also, with some artwork for the game. Now what players have is a 15 second timer, a very fast timer, and as the game progresses, everyone's going to be looking at this life support section over here. The life support section has a percentage, so it starts at 80%. And that will go up or down over the course of the game. But the color that it's in tells you what color your timer will start at. So you, with your character, will put your timer here. And then once the yellow timer is done, you'll flip it and put it on the green. And once the green timer is done, you can go again. So the higher your life support is, the more actions you'll be able to take because it will stay on the green. While if your life support gets down into the black area, each act, you only be able to basically have an action every minute. Meanwhile, there's a big timer that will be running down a timer for a clock. And what's going to happen is there was an attack deck of cards. And in this card, when this attack timer runs out, we'll be turning this over and all the different sections on the board, or different sections depending on what happens, will be taking percentage losses. So your life support might go down, or your weapons will go down, or your shields, or your teleport station. And so players are going to have to be constantly running around the board and picking up action, these different materials and actions and going to the different sections. See, what you're going to do, let's say you wanted to increase your shields. Your shield starts at 50% here. So someone can go there and for one of their actions they can turn over the top card here. And you can see that you need a specific tool and you need two energy to increase your shields by 20%. So someone's going to have to come in and drop off two energy and also bring in a wrench which is a tool that's needed for this category. When they do that then the shields are going to go up by 20%. And then you can go in and maybe later on increase them higher, hopefully getting them up to 100%. But attack cards are going to be constantly bringing them down. So players are going to be trying to figure out what's going to be happening, but also different sections of the ship might get it destroyed or injured. And when that happens, like for example, when this one gets hit, that also deals 10% damage to life support. So you're going to need to get a new circuit board and some new metal there to fix that hole in the ship. So players will be running around the board, grabbing the different materials and taking them. They can go to the teleport station up here and they can add energy to the teleport section, which will allow them to teleport materials to the rooms that they need. If players are get damaged, they'll have to go to the infirmary. They always have to keep an eye on life support because if life support gets down to zero, players will lose. And many of the 
scenarios will require them to attack enemy spaceships. You can see here is your enemy spaceship and you will attack it. Whenever your weapons get to 100%, you can attack it. Of course, to get add 30% to the weapon here, I need two energy and a metal, or maybe the next one, I need a hammer, one of these purple and a metal. And so you, you never know for sure what you're going to need to get the percentage up. And every time the weapon fires, it goes back down to 50%. Now, everything I'm saying here, you say, well, that sounds a little bit frenetic, and, and it is, because you can't fix everything, and you really can't yell at each other what to do, because you are constantly watching your own timer. As soon as your time runs out, you need to move it to the next dot, and then you need to move it to the next dot, and you need to run around and move your character and grab the materials that you need to fix one of the sections, and then go to that section with your character and see what the materials are needed on that card, and get those materials there so that you can increase the hyperdrive, or that you can increase weapons, or that you can increase shields, and each of these different sections also has special abilities that you can do, and there's different layouts. And so you have to accomplish a specific goal for the mission. For example, in this mission here, you need to destroy this enemy spaceship, which means you need to hit it five or one, two, three, four times with your lasers. So you need to get weapons up to 100%. But if all you concentrate is on the weapons, they might destroy you by knocking your shields down and destroying your life support. Or, and you can't afford to let your teleport go down because you won't be able to move different things around the ship. And some things require more teleporter strength than others to move them around, including other people. Then each person has to use the special abilities of their person that they have. Uh, like, for example, Professor Frank can use any tool. I'm sorry, can use any of the different types of materials for another type. This robot here is not affected by the life support system as the other players are. So he doesn't have to worry about life support going down. She can do two repairs when doing a repair action rather than one. Because again, you might have a lot of different things, but you can only put down one per action. So you're constantly watching your timer. When's the timer gonna run out? Flip it over. When's it gonna run out? Flip it over. So every 15 seconds, unless of course life support's down, then it might be every 30 seconds or every 45 seconds. Meanwhile, you're watching this timer tick down, down, down. Then when these cards are turned over, different sections of your ship will be attacked, but there's also a possibility that an event will happen. And when you get to the last card, the game is over and you will likely lose. And these cards will be different because you're not using the whole deck, you're only using a certain amount for each scenario. So different events will come up and different percentages will be uh, hitting your ship at different times. Now that's kind of a cursory overview. I haven't gone over every single module, what it does, and every scenario, what they do, and what every card does, and what the different modules that will be attacked by the, the ship will be, but, all that being said and being done, it offers a huge amount of replayability because the ship can be put in different configurations, the, it off, the, different kinds of scenarios, you use different groupings of people. So there's a lot of replayability and there's a lot of fast and fun. This is not a game where you'll ever sit around being bored because you will always get to go as soon as your timer runs out. So that's how you play the game. There's a lot of interesting aspects to this game. The actual things of how the game works is not that difficult. Find this to repair this section to get these to put together and so on. That makes sense and it's not a difficult thing to do to, to figure out, but it's trying to decide the best course of action. And while you can discuss things, the timers are always running. So you're constantly, okay, uh, I, I, what's the most important thing? I, I, I'm assuming life support's more important, but ugh, I can't afford to have the, the weapon system go down. Maybe you should go over there and run a teleport section. But when it comes down to it, every single decision that you make is not going to be dictated by someone else because they don't have time. They're too busy doing their things. And so there's lots of actions going on, but the actions aren't difficult. Grab this, run over here. There's a lot of components though, and with the different missions that will come in the instruction booklet, many different things that you can do. You're never quite sure how the enemy's gonna attack you. You're never quite sure which systems are gonna go down. What you can do is you can say, I think this system's more important than that one, and that's what we need to deal with. So there is a level of chaos and excitement going on during the course of the game, but you are working on your own job while keeping an eye on everybody else's job. There's a lot of different things going on at one time, which all coordinates into one uh, thing that makes sense. 
but it, will you survive? Well, that's the that's that's how the game works. So take a look at the link. The game is already fully kickstarted, so this game will be produced. Here's your chance to jump on board and get a copy for yourself. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.